Is this toy really as bad as people say it is? Like all the visceral hate that some people throw at it? No. But is it good? Also no. I wanted to start this video in robot mode, but he's in rhino mode when I started shooting and writing this video and I really don't feel like transforming it several times. So we're starting in uh, rhino mode. Rhinox here has a pretty bang in rhino mode. Kibble is kibble on a beast mode. It's unavoidable, especially at this price point. I don't really care about that. I do like the colors and the tooling on most of the rhino. Keyword is most. The top is where I start my issues. The, it's so incredibly smooth. There's like very little tooling on it and it stands out so much next to the textured side panels and it both looks and feels off. These green spots on the shoulders too. They really don't serve any purpose in this mode. It's because the robot mode, like the whole portion of the shoulders there is green. So it makes sense for the robot mode. If they were to paint the top to match the Rhino, it would scratch, but it does, it stands out quite a bit and looks a bit weird. If they could have maybe redesigned the hinge a little bit, they could have gotten around that, done like a thrilling 30 maybe. The head is cool, but again, the paint does that weird thing where it just like stops halfway. Like the speckles just kind of stop and then it's smooth. I don't understand the whole smooth texturing thing. The mouth hinge is also a little too close to the front of the face. So when you open the mouth, it looks weird. Underside is, well, what did you expect? It's a beast former. Speaking of which, it's a brick. And that's usually the case with Rhinox toys. Even Thrilling 30 was mostly just a brick. Man, I need to get one of those again. I'm so bummed out that I don't have it anymore. And as I mentioned earlier, I really wish the speckling along him was more spread out around the toy. And also something I noticed are these little side pieces here are a different color than the rest of the toy. That's a bit strange. It's a nice size. Like I like the size of this thing. It fits very well with other Beast Wars, Kingdom toys, hell, even some of the original Beast Wars toys too. It's just a nice size. I also love the way the weapons store but getting them there is a pain in the ass, which is really what this thing is. It's a pain in the ass. This is the biggest point of debate from a lot of people. And I'm going to do this portion handheld because I want to walk you through how tough the transformation can be. It's basically, there's not enough space to move all the stuff around that you need to move. And it's all contained within the legs. Like there, like here's me struggling with it. So Rhinox's transformation is something that is a bit eh for a lot of people especially these back sections here. So like when you're doing it, it's fine for the most part. Like the arms, real easy. They just pop out like that. But then this is where you run into a lot of the clashing, which is what a lot of people end up complaining about because this guy just needed a little bit more refinement to make sure all these bits move out of the way of everybody else. Because like, well, first of all, I can't even get this open. Eh, there we go. But you get all this stuff mashed in here and then the arms get caught underneath the headpiece. So you gotta like really try to push this out of the way to get that out. That's really annoying. Come on, there we go. And once those are out, you got the arms. And now we gotta, oh God, now we gotta tackle the legs. Okay, so you split it and you just, you just poops out his gun and then you gotta just like bring these out oh, we'll do one first eh. the biggest issue I have with this thing is this lack of clearance it gets in its own way all the time and it's really frustrating especially with this bit here trying to like clear the Get out of the way. Eh. Okay. And then like, maybe, maybe, there we go. We got the bit out. And that's, that's a leg. That took a lot of efforts to get that one leg on a Voyager class toy out of its socket. Let's try this again. All right. Eh. Okay, that one was a little easier. Going back. All right, the foot just came right off. Eh. Going 
back into ro into Rhino mode is even more difficult. See, but that that's the most difficult part of the transformation is the legs. And once you get that, it's pretty like this is super satisfying to do. This is just pretty easy. And boom, there's Rhinox. I do really like how the toy goes from a fully gray to a primarily green robot. It's pretty cool. It reminds me of Astro Train when he triple changes, he changes from purple to gray to, you know, robot. One of my friends described him as two dimensional because he's wide but flat. And if you raise the arms or look from the top, it's very like two dimensional. The front of the legs too, they're very plain because it's the back of the Rhino. And so there's that same tooling issue where there's just not being enough tooling at all. The green also looks a little off. I don't know how it's like too bright of a green for me to fit with the rest of the kingdom line. Like it just, it just, the green feels a little off to me. The arm rotation is also weird. It rotates fine, but if you rotate it and then move the arms out, it's weird. It's because of where the pins are located on the shoulders. It looks like this. And you can also see the support structure inside the arm, which looks a bit ugly. It's like the understuds of Lego. I love the chest though. I don't care, that's a fake part because it has to be wider by design. It's the normal mouth just wouldn't have cut it. So I'm okay with this. The weapons look neat, but they don't spin, nor are they any good. <laughs> they are super thin and really lifeless. Like the guns have no substance to them, unlike the Thrilling 31, and those had a spinning feature and could fit inside the Rhino mode. So these are just really pitiful to me. Like they could have put the spinny thing, but they just didn't. These weird side flaps next to the jaw though stick out a bit too much and they seem very out of place. They just, they throw me off a little bit. And they're, like I said, a different color from the rest of the skin of the Rhino very slightly. Another issue I have with the legs is that the tail is just kind of sticking out the side there. It looks really weird and it messes with the tabbing of the front panel and the leg shaping too. It's just, it's all just strange. It's because of the way the panels swing around to tab in, but it's like, it feels very unnecessary. Rhinox's head, I'm fine with. There were people complaining that it's not being accurate, but like, it's not supposed to be Beast Wars accurate to a T. It's the slight stylization of them, so I'm okay with that. It just lacks essence. The mouth gets very lost in that sea of green, and the gold paint isn't as vibrant as I would have liked it to be. And that's just the case with most of the paint on it. It's not like the, the gold is not as vibrant as I would have wanted it to be against that really bright green. If they darkened the green, the gold would have stand, stood out a little bit more. But the Thrilling 31 is just a lot more pleasing to look at with its paint. I'm also gonna walk you through the articulation because it's actually really interesting in some of the, the like design choices that they did for this toy. So here you go. Rhinox's articulation is something that is actually really cool. And you wouldn't expect that from something that looks and is built like, like a tank, right? You would expect it to be good, but not great. And while it's not perfect, like wrist swivels would be nice, but the way he transforms, it's eh, he can't really do that. His head's pretty expressive. You got a ball joint, which is really cool. And then the arms do the whole rotation thing. And they rotate weirdly, like I stated earlier, that that looks, that looks dumb. But the, the most surprising thing is this joint. This is so cool. I wish more Transformers had this joint. He has butterflies, so you can like move the arms in. I love that. I think that's so cool. But then it's just like your standard fare of joints after that. Nothing super special. Waist joint is actually pretty limited by the chunky stuff around him, but it's not, ugh. It's not too terribly bad. He does have double jointed knees as well and ankle pivots, which is pretty nice. The toy as a whole though is okay. To me, it feels a lot like Thrilling 30 Roadbuster in the sense that I don't see anyone going out of their way to find Thrilling 30 Roadbuster, and I don't see people going out of their way to get this thing either. I feel like it'll probably just end up being one of those toys that falls into no one really wants it anymore, and you'll end up seeing it all the time at vintage shops like I do with Thrilling 30 Roadbuster. I see him all the time at conventions, vintage shops, my buddy's store, because nobody wants one. And Rhinox here, here, Legacy has come out, and Rhinox is still shelf warming. Like these everywhere at Toys R Us, they just cannot get rid of them. So should you buy it? I mean, it's an okay toy. And if you really, if you really need a Rhinox and you can't find the Thrilling 30 version for cheap, then get this instead. Cause it's, this one is rough around the edges. And if it just had maybe a couple more months to sit in the design stage, it would have been a lot better. Now, is it as bad as everybody says? No, it's not the worst thing ever. There are much worse toys out there, 
It's not terrible looking toy either. There are a lot like uglier toys. It's not terribly fun to mess with. It's a little frustrating and it's a bit of a pain in the ass because it could have been great, but it just ended up being mediocre and mediocre figures tend to get forgotten about. So I definitely see this thing just being thrown to the side in the next couple years. But that's been my look at Kingdom Rhinox. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and I will see you next time. Goodbye.